Hi guys, it's been such a long time since I uploaded a video last summer. I used to make videos of traveling, but this time around, I just want to share some information about the laptop that I got a couple of days ago. Yeah, here is my uh, Lenovo ThinkPad T14S with Ryzen 4750U processor. So basically, it has 8 cores and 16 threads in it, and also it has 16 gigs of RAM and 400 nits low power display. If you want to know the details, I will put uh, the spec sheet in the description section below. So far, I've been using it a couple of days, and my only impression on it is so amazing that it was almost impossible to find any downsides. Since the design has been almost the same for many years, I'd rather skip the design part and I'd like to focus on its performance and in internals and finally better time. So let's get started. But first, let's take a look at display. The display satisfies NTSC 72% color gamut with 400 nits brightness. It's pretty enough to do some photo editing or video editing because the color is accurate enough to do these kind of things and it's also bright enough to use it outside. Um, I think some of you might have heard about some lottery issues with the low power display of ThinkPad which is depending on the manufacturer that makes a display there could be some ghosting issues and there is no way to choose or figure out which display you will have in advance. However, fortunately, I couldn't have noticed any issues from mine so far. Yeah, so more specifically, mine came with uh, this display from Inolux. So it has been so, so great so far and I'm not sure whether that uh, lottery issue was solved or not. But I hope it is. Next, let's see the performance. I think it's where it shines compared to its Intel counterpart. I was so surprised by its performance. First, I've run a couple of rounds of R20 Cinebench program. The result was mind-blowing. Look at the sheer number. It just outruns Intel i7-9750H processor and even i7-7700K desktop processor. Uh, for reference, Intel i7-9750H processor is typically used in gaming laptops and has a score of 2595 on the same benchmark on average. I know it's not a fair comparison and there are tons of things to consider when it comes to assessing the overall performance, but again, it's true that the number somehow tells us how powerful it is. What's even better is that it managed to maintain its performance for an extended period. Uh, to see if there is any throttling issue or not, I played uh, League of Legends for one and a half hours. Uh, with the highest settings and the anti-aliasing turned on, uh, it produced 100 frames per second on average. Uh, however, there were a few times where the frame rate dropped to 70 or 80 frames frames per second, but still, it wasn't an issue for playing the game. Right after I finished playing the game, I ran the Cinebench test again to see if it can handle the consecutive workload, and I was surprised because it scored over 2900. Actually, it was a higher score than the first one. I think it's safe to say there is no disturbing throttling issue with this laptop. Next, I tested with Premiere Pro with flashed footage. I applied transition effects, Gaussian blur, chroma key effects at the same time, and it worked pretty well. Scrubbing through the timeline was smooth enough to do most of the editing work with flashed footage, and of course, what you are seeing now is made with this T14S. I was quite surprised that it can handle heavy tasks at the same time without a dedicated graphics card. However, one thing I should say is, if you apply some 3D effects or other effects that require less of GPU power, it starts to stutter. So the integrated graphics card only goes so far. Also, I tried 4K editing to see if it can handle, but also because of the lack of dedicated graphics card, you will be just able to do cut editing with 4K footage. Speaking of the fan noise and thermals, I think it's perfect considering its thin and light form factor. During the repetitive benchmark tests, core temperature was also stable, marking under 78 Celsius degrees on average. 
Also, the hit from the keyboard was not that disturbing, and the fan noise was also surprisingly quiet. Even while I was playing League of Legends, the fan noise was so quiet that I was thinking the fan mode was in quiet mode. Of course, I could feel the hit from the right part of the keyboard and the upside of the hit sync when I do some heavy tasks like video editing, playing games, but other than that, uh, I could barely feel the hit from any part of the laptop during light use, such as web surfing, watching movies, or writing documents while listening to music. Uh, and of course, uh, there was no fan noise. Uh, it felt like the fan didn't spin at, spin at all. I think Lenovo put a pretty big margin between its cooling capacity and its feeding power, which means they didn't make the processor work hard. Um, so maybe that's the reason why it doesn't have a recognizable throttling and thermal and noise issues. Okay then, next let's see how its speakers perform. There are two speakers at the bottom of it, but in fact, I've never expected any performance from its speakers. Because, you know, I've heard it a lot of times that ThinkPad speakers are terrible, except those in the X1 Carbon series. But it turned out these speakers are pretty decent, actually. Yeah. I have an MSI gaming laptop and Samsung Ultrabook, and comparing this one to them, uh, I think its definition is better than them, um, although the maximum volume is at the same level. So, take a listen.
Here are photos of the internals. It has one thick head pipe and soldered memory, so you cannot upgrade memory, but you can upgrade SSD storage up to 1TB. And for those who go with 400 nits low power display, it seems you can upgrade WN or LTE modem as the antenna is already built in a display panel. But again, I'm not sure whether the antenna is necessarily integrated with the low power display. But it has been also built in the low power display of T495S. Also, there is a micro SD card slot at the back side of the laptop. Finally, I want to talk about battery time. Although I've been using it for just a couple of days, I can see the new Ryzen processor is efficient enough to make you work through a day. With light use, it can last more than 8 hours with 70% brightness. And as it has the biggest battery capacity of 57 watt hour among all the thin ThinkPad uh, series, including the X1 Carbon, it would be the best choice if you're looking for a long lasting ThinkPad. In conclusion, it's an ultra thin laptop with crazy performance and silence. It might seem I've been just flattering this laptop, but what I just said is exactly what I felt. Um, but also, of course, there are some shortcomings such as uh, the absence of the de dedicated graphics card and soldered memory and the absence of Thunderbird 3 ports. So you should take that into account. However, I'm sure that it will be the best laptop for those who want to do office work and casual gaming and video editing from time to time. I just hope the manufacturers put these awesome AMD processors um, in their high-end lines as well. So thank you for watching my video and I hope this helps you make a decision. Thank you.